My first impression of DOSBox X is, well, it's very user friendly. Here we have DOSBox X emulating Space Quest 3 and we can straight away see we have a menu here that you can navigate with the mouse. So lots of options to do here with the emulation. And the CPU, this is really easy for beginners. You can set the speed of your processor. A lot of these DOS games are speed sensitive. So a game like Space Quest 3, you want to have something like a 286, nothing too fast for it to run at the correct speed. There are all sorts of options here with video, for example, the original aspect ratio, which is the default in a lot of emulators and is not correct. You want to make sure this is set to 4x3 and you can dig a little bit deeper. For example, you can change the output to OpenGL Perfect, which is a pixel perfect option or you can have this one here the nearest neighbor one which i like it gives you a sharp look and there are also options for the three effects voodoo emulation for the pc 98 option if that's something you're into and you can muck around with shaders for example to get scan lines under sound i really like this option here showing the Sound Blaster configuration. Very often games have a setup program that asks you for the interrupt and the DMA. And if you're not sure what that is, well, here you can easily look it up and we can also check out the MIDI device configuration. So at the moment we've got a Roland MT32 in action. There are options here to capture video and audio and also saving states. So. In a game, maybe you're encountering a really difficult section, you can save the state of the entire game and then quickly load it. That's really nifty. And especially useful is a graphical way to mount drives. So for the C drive, you can mount a folder as a hard drive. And then for the D drive, you can mount a image file. There should be an option here mount a disk or CD image and off you go. So really user friendly, especially for beginners. DOSBox uses a config file. It's a big text file that lets you change all aspects of the emulation. And what is really cool here under main, we can open our configuration tool, which allows you to control these aspects through a graphical user interface. So let's say we wanna change the MIDI device from a Roland MT32 to General MIDI. We're going to use the Fluid Synth emulator and here we have our sound font loaded. Press OK. Save into the config file. Save and restart and it will then reboot everything and we are good to go. The focus of DOSBox traditionally is to emulate DOS games but DOSBox X goes a lot further. This document here, the DOSBox X feature highlights, well, it's a fantastic read. There's lots of interesting stuff going on. The user interface, the uh, safe states, mounting, NEC PC98 support. We've got uh, translatable user interfaces, the CPU speed optimization. There's a lot of really cool and interesting stuff going on, which is beyond what the vanilla DOSBox provides. DOS games have a wide range of supported sound cards and DOSBox X does not disappoint. We have support for the classics, the AdLib and the Sound Blaster, but for those of you who want to experience MIDI, everything is supported. General MIDI, we can mount sound fonts in the SF2 format that works just fine. Here we have a sample recording of the game Raptor. The mighty Roland MT32 is also supported. You just have to put the ROM files into the directory of where DOSBox is located and off we go. Here we have Space Quest 3 with the Roland MT32.
I checked out the 3 d Effects Voodoo emulation and here we have Tomb Raider, the very first game with the Voodoo patch in action and it's running perfectly fine, absolutely no complaints. Later I tested another game, here we have Screamer 2, again with the 3 d Effects Voodoo patch and here I ran into some issues. So DOSBox X has two modes to support Voodoo emulation, the first one does all the calculation in software and here I'm having issues finding the right CPU cycle speed. The sound would always give me some sort of stuttering. So I switched over to the pass through mode which can run faster higher performance and here I found the game to run a little bit too fast. So maybe I'm missing a little tweak or setting here but this is an observation I made when testing a bunch of games with DOSBox X. Windows is also supported and that got me really excited. So we have support for Windows 3.X like 3.11 but most importantly for me Windows 98 SE is supported. So that's something I really had to check out. Here we are Windows 98 running in DOSBox X. So I followed the instructions on their website. We've got for the main display adapter. It's an S3. I think it's a Trio 64. Yep, here we go. And for the graphics we've got a 3DFX Voodoo. I've updated the drivers for the Voodoo and we also have a sound card. I think it's a Sound Blaster PCI or something. Let's have a look in the options. We go to multimedia and here we go. So yeah, it's a Sound Blaster. 16 device and I'm excited. Let's check out a few games and see what the emulation can do. And things are looking good. Here we have the final reality demo. It's running smooth. I don't see any graphical errors. The frame rate is fine. The visual quality is fine. So we are definitely off to a good start. Games unfortunately, well, they didn't work so well for me. So starting off, I'm testing the incoming benchmark and here we would get a crash with an exception code. The next game I checked out is Dark Forces 2. So this game runs well enough, but sometimes we can see some screen flickering going on with certain textures. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but at least the game runs fine. Screamer 4x4, this is a fun racing game. We have a mode supporting the Glide API for the Voodoo. The game launches fine, we can select all the menus, but then when we're trying to enter the game we're getting an error about an illegal operation. Unreal is a classic and one of the games I always test when working with retro computers. It seems to be working okay at first and here we are in the game. The frame rate seems to be acceptable but right away we can see again some issues with a few textures flashing. There's just something weird going on and unfortunately eventually the game crashes to the desktop. So what gaming is concerned under Windows 98 I think you are better off with PCM or 86 box. The compatibility is just not there unfortunately. Now apart from games maybe you are into running some older legacy applications. Yeah, here DOSBox X could be suitable for you. But I have a feeling that if you want to really get serious with Windows emulation you are better off with PCM or 86 box. So all in all I really like what I'm seeing. DOSBox X is really user friendly. There are a lot of you out there that want to try DOS games but the learning curve is a little bit too steep. So having a nice graphical user interface with the mouse to quickly change some settings that's really well done and mounting drives for example mounting an optical disk image of a game and then mounting a folder of your C drive that's also very convenient so it's awesome for beginners. I was also impressed with all the additional supported features that DOSBox X brings to the table. So whereas the vanilla DOSBox focuses on just DOS games, DOSBox X has a much 
wider scope. The Windows 98 emulation, unfortunately for me, was a bit of a disappointment. I had high hopes and I was really looking forward to that aspect, but it fell a little bit flat. It's just not as good as PCM or 86 box. So guys, all in all, I can recommend DOSBox X, especially to beginners. And if you're interested in some of the additional features that DOSBox X provides that are not found in the vanilla version of DOSBox. And again, I'm really happy we have another option, another program we can recommend to the community because this is the reason why I run the channel, to get more people excited about playing classic games. And well, the reality is building a vintage computer, well, it's time expensive, financially expensive, and sometimes it just drives you crazy because there's just something not working. You might have to replace capacitors. It can be a lot of work. So if you just wanna play the games, then emulation is definitely the way to go. And yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching and all the support, and I shall see you soon with another one.